At the start of season number two, as Ralph Ranić takes charge of some transfer business this pre-season. Anel Ahmed Hozic, I know you all know about him. He, of course, uh, has one season at Bordeaux on loan, played 36 games, played very well. Well, he went back to Malmo. They didn't obviously activate the transfer fee. And now Ralph Ranić thinks he can do a job for us in the Premier League. So he's put in a £2.8 million offer. That... I like a lot. That is a quality sign-in, and I mentioned already, of course, if we do manage to get another centre-back, then possibly Diego Llorente can be saying his goodbyes. We do, however, have to deal with some offers coming in for our players too, and Ralph Rannick has rejected a 52, 52 plus percentage of profit of next sale, which is probably not going to be that much, for our goalkeeper, Ilya Meslier. Oh my God, he's rejected it from Newcastle. 52 million. It's absolutely, I mean, he's a great goalkeeper, so I'm obviously happy that he's rejected it. He's only 22, so like he should be good for us for the rest of the campaign. But that is a lot of money. Uh, we do have 40 million pound left, which means we might have spent something. We'll take a look in a sec. But what I have done quite well, I believe, is bring in, uh, I mean, you can see here, we've only actually spent on Samuel, who I don't really know. Uh, and at the end of the season, no, we haven't actually brought anybody in just yet. What we have done, though, is recruit some new staff members at the end of last season. So you can see some scouts coming in, uh, some coaches in the likes of Steve Bold as well. So we are trying to amp up how well we are uh, developing our players through our coaches. And I've asked for two more coaching slots, which they've given me. So that's happy days. Just need to go and apply. Well, let's try and get some, which you can see here. Uh, Luis Pino and D'Agostino, I'm trying to get in the door for some new coaches but in case you didn't know this is going to be episode two season number two where i'll go in a full season every single episode with ralph rannick as the leeds united manager if you haven't seen yesterday's episode make sure you check it out it gives you the rundown on what this series is going to be all about but we join us here because we have played our first game of the season. And it, I think we played Crystal Palace yet again at the first game of the season, which is mental. And this time we were not so lucky. And in fact, we absolutely got FM'd. Uh, they scored on the 45th minute. They had a player sent off with two yellow cards on the 49th. We absolutely battered them, had 22 shots to their three. And yet we could not score and we lost 1-0. Oh, it's just one of those games. Now, we have signed Anel Ahmed Hozic. We've gone a little bit further, of course. He has signed on the dotted line and he has played in our first game of the season. Bubakar Kamara was also playing in that centre defensive midfield role that you can see here. But I really do believe we are missing something up front. I think we are missing something up front. Uh, we ha still have £46 million pound left. And that is because we potentially have sold a couple of players. I spoke about it already. Diego Llorente out the door. Ralph Ranić did not waste no time. Sold him for £11 million pound to Almeria. Uh, we also got rid of Liam Cooper for £5.5 million, pound, who I think is another centre-back. He is. So we've got rid of both centre-backs. He's not actually that bad, Liam Cooper. But we got rid of both centre-backs and brought in both Anel Ahmed Hozic and Bubakar Kamara and Brian Aguiliar, which is a 6 100k deal which is another centre back we probably won't see. Tactically, we have changed it somewhat. Uh, we've now got two players in the DM role. We've got a roaming playmaker and a defensive midfielder in Kamaru because Beltran plays quite well in the roaming playmaker. And Calvin Phillips suits that box to box midfielder role quite well too. Shadow striker and the in for inside forward still works with the pressing forward up top. Uh, this is just the team that we had playing against Crystal Palace. Now, Ralph did actually try to sign another defensive midfielder in Edison who I haven't really heard of before, but he didn't look too bad, to be fair. I think Salah Natana got, rele got himself relegated, so uh, he was quite a cheap little pickup. 5.75 million pounds, 6.5 in total, but however, it was cancelled due to the fact that he failed his medical. Three months with a hip injury he's out for, so we decided not to do the deal, and we still have 46 million pounds left in the transfer budget. We need to spend that, Ralph. But before he does spend that, today's video is sponsored by Spitch. Yeah, Spitch are the fantasy footballer that, that's brand new to the market that you need to start playing in my community league. It is, of course, free to play at the top of the description. You'll see a link right at the top there. You click that link and it will automatically take you to a page to download on your mobile phone 
for free. Yes, Spitch is free to play. You have to be from the UK or Ireland, however, and you do have to be 18 years of age or over and take a snap of your identification to verify your account. But once you are in, yes, it's free to play, but you can still win some prize money. In fact, I've won prize money twice, and that is the reason why I keep trying because i mean i'm quite good at it to be fair we have the community league i'm quite near the top of it not to mention as well one of the best things i think about spitch is that if you have really screwed up your team like i keep doing and i keep selecting cristiano ronaldo praying that he's going to score and he never does then the next week you don't have to have like a limited amount of transfers it's a brand new budget to build a brand new team isn't that just amazing i hate the restrictions that some fantasy footballing apps have not with spitch not to mention all of the statistical analysis is on the app as well to help you pick your players. It's absolutely amazing. It doesn't matter that you haven't played from the start of the season. You can literally pick Spitch up this weekend and still win some prize money and still have a lot of fun. So make sure you do that. At the top of the description, like I said, the first link will download Spitch for free. The second link is the Community League. Join the Community League with about 50 to 60 other people in my league and play against me, play against Dad. See if you can beat us on a week-by-week -week basis and see if you can also have a lot of fun with Spitch. Thank you very much for sponsoring today's video. Right, we've gone all the way through to the summer deadline day. We're at the 31st of August right now, and we have just made an 80 million pound bid for Jens Peter Haug from uh, AC Milan. Obviously the young Norwegian, he's a quality player. My question is, we already have Rafinha playing in that role. So what's the dealio here? Why aren't we trying to go for somebody that we potentially need like an actual striker? Because I really do think we're struggling for strikers right now. Uh, staff members as well, you're going to like this, Leeds fans, because, of course, I've taken over the job of uh, Jesse March, who I'm quite interested to see how he does in the Premier League and whether he tries to uh, try and replicate what he has done previously that has been quite successful at like the likes of Salzburg in his hard-pressing style. Uh, my assistant manager was terrible, and I think it is actually Jesse March's assistant manager, so I signed somebody else. I signed Jesse March. <laughs> I mean, it made complete sense. So he was out of a job because I took his job. And then I was like, hey, Jesse, do you want to come back and do your job as an assistant manager? He was Ralph Ranić's assistant manager for a while at, at Leipzig. And then, of course, he took the job at Salzburg. So he's actually best suited for an assistant manager. I'm not trying to shoehorn, play, shoehorn people into jobs that they can't do. I'm actually slotting them in perfectly into jobs that they can do. Ralph Rangnick as director of football. Jesse March as my assistant manager. I mean, this is just perfect, right? I'm making some intelligent decisions here. Now, this is actually another signing that we have made this deadline day, and it's Thomas Handel. Uh, we actually had the bidder accepted a couple of days before. It's a player I've never heard of. Whether he's got a bit of a boost in the winter update, 21 years of age. Uh, centre midfielder who can also play in that DM role. I think he's quality. Like, there's a lot to like about him especially for our team slots in quite nicely and we only picked him up for 7.75 million pound uh played a few games this season this is going to be obviously he will be debuting because we've only just signed the deal but still i think that's a really good signing but other than anel and thomas there's been a, a couple of like youth signings and we haven't really sold anybody else other than Kiko Casilla, uh, which was a recent one, Liam Cooper and Diego Lorente. I have also loaned out Daniel James and it is going to be for a future transfer as well. So we're getting Daniel James off our books. I don't like him. Like, we're never going to use him. Right, there's five hours remaining of this deadline day and we've put in another bid for another centre-back. So no striker, but Mohamed Simakan, a centre-back that I absolutely love. And he's from Red Bull Leipzig, which, hey... That is basically Jesse March. Je he knows Jesse March. He knows Ralph Rannick. I'm pretty sure Ralph Rannick signed him for Strasbourg, or at least Jesse March did. Jesse March actually probably signed him. So he knows some of our staff members, and he is a quality player. 6'2", good pace, okay mentals, and he's only 22. He's got a decent enough potential. Yeah, I really like that signing. If we do manage to bring that over the line, we've offered him a 45 grand a week contract, 14 million pound with a percentage of profit in next sale. But I still really want that striker. Well, the similar can deal got over the line it is a completed deal for 14 million pound he's actually a really good wide center back as well because he's got decent enough dribbling and crossing ability should we ever wish to go to a three at the back style formation to be honest we've got enough players to do that it could be a possibility in the future we have changed tactic and i will show you that in a sec 
But transfer window wise, that is us done. We did not sign another striker. So we've signed a right winger in Jens Peter Hogg. We've also signed uh, Simakan. And of course, we've got Thomas Handel, Ananel, Ahmed Hosic. So four big first team deals there with a couple of youth signings, uh, spending £43 million, £17 million on the outs. So we still have a little bit of money left, £12 million with a decent enough wage budget. So that could be used in January, of course. But let's take a look at the tactic then. We have changed it, like I mentioned. We've gone to this offset with that shadow striker, an inverted winger now instead of the inside forward. Uh, with the advanced forward up front. Now, for some reason, and I don't know why, I could not get Patrick Bamford to score any goals. Throughout the whole of preseason, he just was not scoring, and I don't know why. I even offered him out to some clubs just to see if we could get some money for him, which would then encourage Ralph Rannick to sign a new striker. It didn't happen. So I tell you what I'm going to do is we've got Jens Peter Hogg who can play on the right, I'm going to put Rafinha up top. He can't play there quite yet, but I'm starting to train him in that role, the advanced forward role, and we're going to see if we can score some goals with Rafinha. He's not a bad striker. He only has 30 for finishing, but he does have incredible anticipation, composure, decision makings, and off the ball. And of course, he has that pace. Coupling that with dribbling and first touch, I really don't think that 13 finishing matters too much, to be honest. I would like to train... Uh, gets into or breaks the offside trap but i asked to do that and they kind of suggested that he own he knows too many player traits or he's too late on i can't remember what they said so we're just going to stick with this he has gets into opposition area which is good enough for me yeah i wonder whether rafinha can score some goals and of course meslier in goal as our main number one we have played three more games this season. It was a 0-0 draw against Everton, but we did get a 2-0 victory against Fulham and a 3-0 victory against Middlesbrough with Jack Harrison, Rafinha from the penalty spot, and Junior Firpo with the third on the 64th minute. Okay, 1st of February, the January transfer window has now closed and we have made one sign-in in Dominic Yankov, 22 years of age. He's a very good centre midfielder or a centre attacking midfielder. He can also do a job out on the wings or up front. Bulgarian, and I think we have got a bit of a bargain here. Like I mentioned in the last episode, Ralph Rannick has a little black book of all quality potential players on this game that you can pick up for really cheap bargains. This is one of those guys. Even I wouldn't have thought of going for Dominic Yankov. Uh, I have signed him before on a rebuild, but he's not one that always like I remember to go to. But he is quality. There's so many 15s here. I really do think he is really good. And, and player traits too. Strong. Very strong. £4.8 million from Ludogorets. That is insane, really. Uh, I didn't realise he'd come through the Sunderland Youth Academy, but maybe it was started off at Ludogorets. I don't really know. But still, maybe that's why we managed to pick him up, because he is got some kind of English like passport or something. I don't know. But that is a quality sign-in to go with the signings that we have already made this season. On the outs, we've got a couple of loan deals, but nothing too serious. And Seb Quirk leaving, which is just a youngster. But we have changed the tactic again. But before we have done that, I'll show you some of the results and where we are this season. Uh, so this season, we, have, we are right now in 10th place, 31 points. So we are somewhat off the European spots. And of course, we were in Europe too. And never actually shown you our European uh, Europa League group. Uh, Lewandowski, by the way, is at Chelsea. There's some bonkers deals that have been going on right now. Maybe I'll show you at the end of the season. But still, uh, Chelsea are currently top right now, only losing one game of the season. That's Arsenal, a 1-0 loss to them. So we're doing all right. In the co other competitions, we have qualified from our Europa League group as top. We lost two games to Dinamo Kiev and Bodo Glimp, but we won the other four. We beat... Uh, Real Sostad twice, which I'm really proud of, to be fair, without conceding a goal. They have obviously like Alexander Isaacs and quality players, and we've managed to beat them twice. So we, I think we actually had a, a difficult group, and yet we, we, we come through quite unscathed, really, uh, top of the group too. We were knocked out of the fourth round by Manchester United in the Carabao Cup and the English FA Cup. We do have Leicester in the next round. Schedule-wise, we had a very bad period uh, in October. We only won one game, and that was against Bodo Glimp. The rest of the games, I don't know what went on. I really don't, because obviously we simulated it, uh, because in September, we had a great month, like fantastic. We went on a very good unbeaten run, all the way up until Newcastle when they stuffed us 2-1. Jens Peter Hall could also getting himself sent off there too. Uh, and a 3-0 loss to Aston Villa. Some really poor results here. That's an unlucky one. Ronaldo scoring in the 83rd minute to score. But Chelsea, 1-0 loss to them. Of course, they're top right now. We had an okay November. Then, of course, it goes into the uh, Qatar World Cup. Where we had to cram in loads of games. We come back 
and took a 4-0 drumming from Manchester City. We have somewhat come back a little bit, but we did take three losses to teams that you would expect and, well, and Wolves as well. A 1-0 loss to Wolves, but 1-0 loss to Chelsea, who are top, of course, and a 3-4 loss to Liverpool away as well. Uh, Mohamed Salah getting himself a hat-trick. So we are 10th. It's disappointing, but Europa League... That part's promising. Like I mentioned, the tactic. We are going for this. It's a 4-2-3-1 narrow. We now have so many center attacking midfielders. We might as well try and use them more. Jens Pikahor can play there as well. We've got Dominic Jankov, Jack Harrison, Rodrigo. Uh, there's just so many players to name, to be fair. And then we've got some decent center defensive midfielders too. So let's try this more narrow style formation. I've played this way in the past and had some great success with it. Just going through so you can see what we are doing. It's very basic stuff. It's just the shadow strikers that I think create overloads on the defenders and see if it changes our luck throughout the rest of the season. Let's simulate it. Right at the end of the season then, we have actually finished in 10th, which, yeah, I'm not too pleased with. I mean, the top four, you'd expect, even the top five, Manchester United, Everton having another good season, then there's Spurs, but Villa Newcastle beating us to eighth and ninth place. We drop all the way down to 10th. I and mean, we were quite secure in the top, top half of the league, which, you know, Southampton going down is quite surprising. Oh, I'm a little bit annoyed by that. I really am a little bit. I thought changing to the, the three shadow strikers would be good for us. I really do think we need a striker, though. I really, really do. Uh, we could have tried Patrick Bamford, but in all honesty, like he had two, well, one and, a, one and a bit seasons, and he just wasn't scoring goals. So I went for Rafinha. I don't think it's paid off. What about other competitions, then? Oh, hello. I thought we won it then. We're the runners up in the Europa League. We lost to Atalanta 1 0 in the final. Duvan Zapata scored in the 71st minute. That's why then we might have struggled in the league. Oh, look, 6.3s. Wow, we played so bad in that game. We were actually playing Kamara at centre back too, which I don't think we should be doing in, in important games. And they look like they had a very good game. Oh, that's so frustrating. Um, okay, then let's take a look at our season and see how those games played out in uh, the Europa League. So obviously after qualifying top in our group, we came up against Shakhtar Donetsk, I think drop out of the of the Champions League and we faced them. We defeat them 2-0 by Leverkusen. So we draw 3 all with them at their ground. Uh, they actually equalise in the 93rd minute, which is annoying. But they come to us and uh, click scores in the first five minutes. We win that one. Then we face another German team in Borussia Mönchengladbach. One or draw at home. Uh, we scored quite late on after their quite late goal. But when we went on the away leg, that's what I like to see. Jack Harrison and Dominic Jankov, two second half goals. That is absolutely fantastic. And then obviously we play at the Puskas Arena. That's annoying because, of course, we had our own uh, Hungarian player there playing at the Puskas Arena. And it doesn't actually look like we played him, which is even more frustrating. He probably would have played really well, but that's so disappointing. That's not a bad season, though. Oh, we've got a lot of money next season. Uh, it doesn't look like Ralph Rannick has decided to make any signs. Tom Bischoff's a good one. Oh, I remember him. He's a very good centre midfielder. He doesn't have the best determination. Uh, I'm fairly ambitious personality, but he does have a good potential. So Ralph signing another deal, which is obviously at the end of contract for Tom Bishop, but he has a lot of money for next season. So I'm excited for, for the next uh, transfer window that we're about to enter. Okay, let's take a look at the goals then. This is where I think we were let down. Only 20 goals were scored from Rafinha, seven assists and 13 from Jack Harrison. We desperately, desperately need a striker because yeah, Rafinha does have some good attributes, but he's not naturally a striker. And I think that's obviously cost us there. It's not the tactic because I've used this tactic, but well, a very similar one anyway, and it's scored a lot of goals, including a lot of goals from Shadow Striker roles. So I think we just need to get used to it, really. So I'm excited to try that next season, maybe with a brand new striker. That's what we need, Ralph. We need a brand new striker. As opposed to players going out, there might be a couple that I might look at getting rid of. There's a couple who are like around 30 now. So Click and Rodrigo, definitely two players that I think I've even listed. Uh, and trying to get rid of even the likes of Adam Forshaw and Luke Aylin, who are 31. If we can sign replacements, especially for Luke Aylin, 
Uh, I wouldn't mind getting rid of him either. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Patrick Bamford could be another one too. We haven't really played him this season. Even when we did, he didn't score any goals whatsoever. Uh, but he scored four from coming off the bench. Yeah, not great. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. Smash a like if you are. That will be really handy. And I'll see you for the next one tomorrow. And download Spitch if you haven't done so already. Join the Community League. Bye-bye.